So the other day, a, a viewer, Heather, posted this comment to one of my videos, and it brought me back to the reality of why I started this channel, which was to help people. And uh, sadly, I sometimes forget that not everybody who watches this channel is an advanced user. And clearly in this case, we have a user who's new and just getting started. And uh, I wanted to kind of take a step back and, and address this comment directly. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to the shop. As I mentioned in the lead in, I wanted to deal with Heather's comment here and I'll put it back up so you, you have some context. And what she's really asking is, is no doubt based on, on certainly as a new user, uh, picking up her uh, clearly uh, full spectrum laser uh, and playing with Retina and Grave 3. But every laser has some kind of software that comes with it and almost all of them you can do some kind of basic design. The question here is why would you use that and or why wouldn't you use that I guess and not some other tool and certainly in my videos you've seen me use Retina and Grave 3 a bit from a drawing perspective not too much but certainly Inkscape and Fusion 360, and there's some other tools I use in the background that you don't see uh, most of the time. What I want to do is kind of break down those three categories and show you what, the, what each of those tools can do and not do and why you would want to use one over the other. Uh, this won't be a tutorial for any of these tools. Uh, I've certainly done some Retina Engrave tutorials and a few Inkscape things here and there. Uh, also a Fusion 360 video recently. Go watch those if you're really that interested in, in some kind of tutorial. But what I wanted to do is kind of cover the capabilities that each of these tools has. And uh, the way I'm gonna do that is I wanna take a simple drawing and I'll put it up here to show you what we're gonna build and create that in each of these tools and then show you what else those tools can do once you've created that shape. So uh, let's get going and uh, hopefully you get something out of this video and by all means leave a comment down below. I respond to all of those. So since Heather uh, is clearly using Retina and Grave 3 and asked about it specifically, uh, I'll do a, a bit of a walkthrough on it, but uh, understand that in the tools around your actual laser when you bought it, or are buying it, uh, almost all of them come with some kind of uh, control software that has some at least rudimentary drawing tools in it. And there's a spectrum uh, in that category ranging from something that can barely control your laser to something that is very feature rich. At one end, you know, you kind of get what you get, but at the higher end you get, uh, and I'm thinking things like Lightburn where it's quite powerful as far as controlling your laser, but it also has some really, really nice drawing capabilities that are both powerful and easy to use. Uh, if you look at something like Retina Engrave 3 or the software that your Glowforge came with, for example, they're somewhere in the middle to upper end of that spectrum. Uh, so they're, they're, they're fairly powerful, but you'll see once you kind of start playing with them where they have uh, some, some weaknesses. Uh, anyway, I wanted to get started with Retina Engrave 3. Now, if you don't have a Muse 3D laser, that's okay, or a full spectrum laser product, that's okay. You can still play along here if you want to. Uh, what I did was go to the full spectrum laser site and I'm not endorsing full spectrum laser by any means I happen to have one and my laser uses it, but they have a simulator here and all I did was went to their site Which is uh, fslaser.com and clicked on the software tab and uh, I can try retina engrave 3 uh, in real time in a simulator, which is kind of cool. So uh, if, if that's if you're interested uh, you can certainly do that when you start your laser software, you typically end up with some kind of canvas like this one and a bunch of drawing tools. So what I can do with Retina Engrave 3 is I can grab a tool, a, a shape, and I can draw it. And, you know, to no surprise, we have, in this case, it's a rectangle because it isn't square. But if I, if I go over here and let's say I want to make this rectangle 50 millimeters square and I'll turn the aspect ratio on just to, so I don't have to do this again. Uh, so now I have a, a, a thing that's a perfect square. Now to create that shape I showed you at the beginning, what I, what I need to do in Retina Engrave 3 is I need to select that object and uh, go up to the, the edit menu here and duplicate it, or I can use the shortcut key, which I'll use from this point forward. Now notice 
it didn't automatically lay the, the second copy on top of the first one. So, you know, arguably, and I'll zoom in here, arguably that's problem number one, because if we're rotating on an axis, uh, we really want to just have it rotate around the center, but I'll leave it the way it, the way it created it here, and I'll show you how to, to deal with that. Notice the angle on this thing, uh, on this shape is zero. So if I want, if I want things to be every uh, 15 millimeters, or every 15 degrees, sorry, I can type 15 here and I can rotate it. So now to get this thing back on center, what I can do is select both of these, these uh, shapes and I can align them to the center of, of the page. And you'll see the, the alignment tools here. So now that I have uh, the second shape rotated 15 degrees and it's centered on, on the shape, uh, I can pick the, the first shape again and again I can duplicate it and you'll see again it, it put it at some skewed location but that's fine. Uh, and now I want to go to 30 and you can see it rotated a little more and I can pick it again and Actually, let's try something here. I'll pick this one and duplicate it. And say 45. Okay, that'll work fine. And duplicate again. And oh, it was actually smart enough to know that I was rotating there. So kudos to, um, to FSL. So once I get these enough of these I'll show you what we're gonna do here so that one we don't need because we're back to 90 degrees so now I can pick all of these again and I can center them and there's our shape now if I wanted to put this on something like a coaster uh, I could pick a an ellipse here and I could just draw a shape and if I hold down the command key, I can draw nice circles. And again, I could center that to the page here and center them. Ah, there we go. Okay. So it wanted me to pick them all. All right. So I've now centered it and I've got this thing that kind of looks like a coaster. And this is the shape we were going for. So, you know, that's how you would do it in Retina and Grave 3. And you can see we certainly can do it and uh, it's definitely possible. But is this the easiest way to do it? Uh, it, it certainly if you're uh, just whipping up something really quick, yeah, you can just go in here and draw something on the RE3 canvas and hit the, hit the, the run button on your laser and start the job and, and engrave it out. But there are, believe it or not, there, and I mean, it's not hard to believe, there are better ways to do this. So certainly, again, you can do it here. You can use RE3 for almost anything. It's not the easiest by far. So, uh, you know, let's take a look at what else we can do. Okay, so the next set of tools to look at are vector drawing tools. And that would be things certainly like Inkscape here, uh, Adobe Illustrator, uh, Corel Draw is also another one. It's a bit old school these days, but it's it's out there. Um, I'm, I'm using Inkscape here and you've seen me use it in other videos in part because it's free and I really hate to have people have to pay for tools that I might use in a video. So I try to stick to the free tools and, and uh, Inkscape, uh, just because it's free, it's, it's certainly not compromised in any way. It's a complete drawing tool. So take a look at it. Anyway, I'll get started here. Uh, so if I draw uh, a, just that square again and let me set it to uh, 50 by 50 millimeters and uh, just to make sure it's square. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll do what I did in Retina and Grave 3 and I'll center it to the page using the alignment tools. So there's my square, it's in the center of the page. Now if I want to create that pinwheel shape here, all I really need to do is duplicate this shape and go to the transformation tab and I'm going to rotate and I'm going to rotate by 50 degrees. So I duplicated it. So unlike RE3 where it kind of offset the second copy, here it's right on top, which means it's going to rotate around the same axis as the original. So 
I set it to 15 degrees, I hit apply, and uh, as you can see, it's there. If I wanna just repeat this, I can say duplicate it again and apply, and you see it did it again. I'll duplicate it again and apply, duplicate, apply, duplicate, apply. So there's our shape, and you can see it took seconds to create that. Now, if I also wanna make this like a coaster, I can create a circle, and if I hold down the control key while I'm doing that, it'll make sure it's a perfect circle. Uh, and again, I will align this to the page and you can see in literally less than a minute, uh, we've created that same shape. It was far easier than it was in Retina Engrave 3. Uh, it's also, well, it, it's pretty much easier than it would be in, in any laser software. And I will include Lightburn there. And if you use Lightburn, don't, don't get all over me about it because uh, you know the intent here isn't to create a head-to-head -head competition on tools. Um, so there it is, it's Inkscape. Now, normally I would have to put that, that shape to the laser uh, and the advantage of Retina Engrave 3 was I drew the shape and it was there and all I had to do was hit the run buttons. Here what I need to do is I need to load that software again and uh, so I have to save this here first and so I can save this and we'll save it as uh, drawing one, sure. Um, yeah, I don't care what if it overwrites whatever was there. And so now I've saved an SVG file. And in the case of Retina Engrave 3, at least, as far as software, all I really need to do now is, uh, is just import that, that SVG file. And you can see once it's there, if it, oh, sorry, I'm zoomed out here. Uh, so you can see it loaded the file and it looks exactly the same as it did before. And what I get here is this kind of embedded list of objects now, uh, the SVG objects. So there's the circle and each one of these is one of the rotated squares. At the end, you get exactly the same thing and now I can hit the run button and go. The only reason I would wanna use Inkscape over RE3 in this case is if uh, I just wanna do something faster and it's easier to save. I have a file now, I can give it to you. Uh, and if you've seen my videos, quite often I'll, I'll create SVG files that you can go download. Uh, this is how I do it. So that's, that's Inkscape and vector drawing tools in general. Uh, worth a look and uh, definitely offer a lot more capability than, than uh, a basic laser tool would, would offer you. So the last category of tool you might want to use is a, is a three-dimensional CAD tool. In this case, I'm, I'm looking at Autodesk Fusion 360, which you can download for free if you're a maker or a student. Uh, mostly full featured, uh, except for some of the additive manufacturing pieces. Uh, and it is limited to 10 projects. So uh, some limitations, but it's free. It's generally full featured for anything you're going to want to do on a laser. If I, if I wanted to draw that, that same drawing we had before, uh, the challenge is it's actually surprisingly difficult in a CAD tool. And the reason for that is because it isn't really made to do that. So if I take my, my, rec, my square that I started with, and, and here I can specify the dimensions right away, which is, which is good. But there's no real way for me to kind of rotate this thing. Right? I could certainly copy it and... Uh, and paste it in and then rotate every single one, much like I did with Retina and Gray 3. Uh, quite painful, but in the end, you can't, there's not an easy way to get that drawing from here out to your laser. So to draw some simple shape like, like we did with the other two tools, here it's, it's really impractical to do that. Um, however, one of the things you can do is, uh, if I delete this and, and do it again, um, one of the things you, you can do in a pinch is you could say, uh, sorry, let me draw a rectangle again. Um, and I'll draw a center out rectangle. So there's a center point to it again, 50 by 50. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can say, Hey, I want to take this shape and create a circular pattern around the center here. 
and around the center. And you can see as soon as I did that, it drew three of them uh, because I said I wanted three, three of these shapes. So everything is shape focused here. Um, and the way I would have to fake this is I'd need to move all of these things kind of converging in on the center. And uh, it's, you can see it's already more tedium than you, wanted, you ever wanted to do. And you, know, you can kind of work your way up to a shape that looks like the other shape we had. Now I could certainly draw a circle around the outside here like we did before. Um, but the problem is there isn't, there isn't a way to get this shape uh, exported out as a bunch of lines. Um, what you'd end up doing in in Fusion is, you know, selecting everything and and saying extrude this because it wants it wants it to be a 3D shape ultimately. So I can extrude it, but then you can see the the actual shape disappeared. Um, so. It, so it's not really the kind of tool you want to use for that for that sort of um, for that sort of drawing, but it is you know if you wanted something that looked like this where it's a tangible part um, with none of those lines in the middle of it, uh, yeah, that's easy, and you could then use one of the plugin tools like this one, Shaper, to uh, export this file as an SVG, the surface of this, and load that into Retina Engrave 3 or your draw your laser software and, and cut it, but. It's not really practical. Where it is practical is when you're drawing things that are quite complex. Uh, in this case, uh, a, a video, a couple of videos ago, I did, I did this pendant lamp. And it, you can see it is fairly complex. There's a lot of parts that have to go together and they all have to fit properly. What I did was create an assembly where I loaded all of these parts in and assembled them in three-dimensional space and now I know before I ever cut one or waste material that, that this is going to fit together. That's where 3D CAD tools come in. Ironically, the, those simple drawings are much, much harder to do on a, on a 3D CAD tool because they're not really designed for that. They're designed more for, for this kind of visualization where you're looking at a bunch of parts that come together. Uh, and uh, if you saw that video, and I can put a link at the end, you would have seen that the lamp actually looks exactly like this. Uh, so that's what CAD tools are for. And again, you, you have all of the capability to draw a, sim a simple shape uh, like this. If I go, actually, let me take a simpler one like the, like the top here. Uh, so I can draw a simple shape, but you can see it's got thickness. It's an actual, it's an actual three-dimensional part, and that's what CAD tools are for. So, anyway, that's Fusion 360. You could export this uh, as a this surface as an SVG, and then load it in and lay down a piece of three millimeter material and put this on top of it and cut it. So you can do that. But to draw just a simple shape for engraving, for example, that's a non-starter. You can't really do anything in a CAD tool that will let you engrave. It's only really for cutting. Uh, anyway, that's, that's the, the CAD category. Uh, each of these has their place. And, uh, and, you know, this one is certainly no exception. So there's the three categories of tools ranging from what's what's built into your laser or from your laser manufacturer through basic drawing, vector drawing tools to three-dimensional CAD. And you can see there's there's things that you can do with one that you can't do with the other. And it's not like the CAD tool is the be-all and end-all uh, because as you as you saw, the basic shape we were trying to draw was was impossible in, in Fusion 360 use the right tool for the job. If you need to do some simple thing where you're just creating a name tag where you just want a box with a name in it, by all means, you can just drop that onto Retina Engrave 3 or your, your drawing tool if you're using Lightburn or something, uh, or your Glowforge, you can just create that on the fly. But if you wanna create a complex shape like that, like that pendant lamp, there's no way you can do that with Retina Engrave 3. It would be very, very difficult with a, with a vector drawing tool like Inkscape. Uh, but as you can see, it's almost trivial to create something like that with it with a CAD tool. So keep that in mind. And this is exactly why you've seen me use three different tools in my videos, because sometimes I, I need the right tool. Well, I always need the right tool for the job. 
Anyway, I'll put the, the video for the pendant lamp up here. If you haven't seen that, go watch it. It kind of walks you through a little more of Fusion 360. Uh, other than that, uh, use the right drawing tool and go make your world. And I'll see you next time.